Hey guys, welcome back to Blue Line Fishing. Today we're going to do is a review of this brand new 2020 Bass Tracker Classic XL. Stay with us, it's going to be good. Alright guys, first things first on this, uh, before we get into any of this, I'll just let you know, uh, this is not my boat. I wish it was my boat, but it's my best friend's boat. Just bought it about a month ago. We had the break-in hours on it now, so we were able to actually fish it last weekend. Uh, fished really, really nice, and uh, fished it on a bigger body of water. But anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you some of the features on this boat. And I'll let you know, too, the overall package length. You guys probably know this if you've looked some of it up. But it's a 16 and a half foot boat. Beam on it is six feet five inches, and it's about four feet six inches deep. Um, and if you're geeky about any of the other stats on it, as far as the the uh, dead rise on it, the dead rise of the transom is six degrees. The dead rise on the bow is 13 degrees. And also, you know, it's a tracker, so it's a one piece aluminum hull with the chines pressed in. With that, we'll get going. I'll show you some of this. The first thing on this is the tongue and it's pretty neat because it's a swing away tongue and if you guys are uh, familiar with these you know how they're great for saving space but this will swing away the overall length of this package is about 23 feet just a hair over when you take the tongue out of the equation uh, it's about 20 feet so it saves you about three feet that way uh, scott can get it in the barn and not have to worry about uh, floor space you know it doesn't take up as much floor space on it so these swing away tongues are really nice uh, one other thing i'll go over on this too is the paint jobs on these uh, classics are fantastic. You can get them in red or black. But one thing about them, when you're launching, make sure that you're ready to go whenever you uh, undo this last carbiner because it is slick as glass. It is not going to stay on this roller. It's going to slide right off. We kind of found that out the hard way. Uh, the paint job, like I say, is awesome, but it's slick and it's going to it's going to come off of this pretty darn quick. With that, we're going to go down here to the. Uh, to the wheels on the trailer. This is a classic trailer, uh, and everybody knows they're, they're, they've always been good ones. With that being said, the uh, this year they put the chrome rims on the uh, on the trailer, and also it's got the uh, chrome hubs on it, and it has the bearing buddy system in it. It's supposed to have the latest and greatest bearing buddy system in it. Time will tell. Uh, they've been around a long time, and uh, guys are familiar with them, but supposedly this is the the latest from bearing buddy that are that are on here. So we're going to see how that works. Time will tell on that too. Now we'll move to the back of the boat. This whole outfit here is powered by, and you guys probably know this, but uh, last year on the Heritage package, they had a 40 horsepower that they were putting on there. This is a 50 horsepower Mercury four-stroke outboard. Um, the prop on the outboard, aluminum prop, 14 degree pitch on it. Uh, that's something else Scott's probably going to upgrade down the road. Uh, probably go to a stainless steel prop, maybe a little bit different pitch on it. But I can tell you this, um, we ran this boat several times, uh, obviously getting the, the 10 hours of the break-in hours in on the outboard, and uh, did a great job with the prop that's on it. It's got a fantastic hole shot. Uh, total package weight on this boat is 780 pounds dry, about 1,700 pounds altogether. But I can tell you this, uh, when we took it out on the Ohio River to get some break-in hours in, we ended up running probably 30 to 35 miles on it. Uh, and it did a great job. Not only we had some choppy water here and there, some bumpy water, we also had some barge traffic, some bigger barge waves. Very smooth, quick hole shot, uh, planes out really nicely, and this whole package fully loaded. We had three people in it, all the fishing gear, all the other gear that goes with it, and it actually was running about 35 miles an hour. I know guys were saying 34 to 36 miles an hour, but it does 35 miles an hour uh, easily, and that's fully loaded with everything. With that, we'll come back here to the back compartment. Uh, one thing I will say too is, on the back in here, and we'll get into this in a minute, this is the transducer for the Helix system, which was an upgrade, the Hummingbird Helix 7, but uh, this is this transom saver that was put on, and Scott put this on aftermarket, and these are really, really nice, if you guys are familiar with it, if you're not, but it's a good investment, and this thing is just works like a charm, and we'll get into the Hummingbird system here in a minute when we go uh, to the console of the boat, but with that, come over here with me and I will show you the power system of this as far as uh, the boat comes with two batteries, one cranking, interstate cranking battery, one interstate deep cycle battery. And here's the thing too that you guys may or may not know, it comes with one six gallon gas tank. Um, when we ran the river the other day just to get break-in hours, it ended up 
uh, this tank was almost empty after about 30, 35 miles, which is no big deal because Scott bought a second tank. But that's something you guys are going to want to do is have a second gas tank. Six gallons, uh, even if you're not fishing tournaments, if you're making long runs on a bigger lake, you're going to want at least 12 gallons of gas, if not more, uh, to just make sure you can get to and, to and from the, the dock marina, whatever, uh, safely without having any issues. So this is the whole, oh, also over here, uh, this is aftermarket as far as being an add-on. The uh, onboard charging system, so it's he can charge at least two batteries uh, at the same time or three. Uh, he's going to actually add a second deep cycle battery for a total of three batteries uh, on this rig, and that's something he'll end up doing before too long here. With that, we'll move forward here to the front console. All right, guys. Uh, the console on this is a one-piece roto-motored console, uh, really nice, and as you can see, I mean, it comes with the Lorentz uh, Hook 3 2D color sonar fish finder. Uh, it's really nice, there's nothing wrong with it, but uh, he went ahead and upgraded to the Hummingbird Helix 7, and I can tell you that this right here, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it, neither does he, but we used it last weekend when we fished, and it is all that in a bag of chips. Um, it's really, really nice, and... This is a really nice upgrade with this ram mount here uh, to the boat. We'll move it to the front here. On the front, uh, you guys probably know that this, the kicker motor on this, the trolling motor on this, is a 45 pound thrust Minn Kota Edge. Um, you know, some guys were wondering if it was underpowered, if it could do the job on this boat. I could tell you when we fished last weekend that we had some wind and we had some chop, it did just fine. Uh, the only knock on it is that Speeds one and two are kind of about the same, then it's kind of, when you jump up to five, uh, you may be going a little too fast. So he'll probably upgrade the, the trolling motor down the road, but it'll be a few years when, the, when it's out of warranty. Uh, until then, this will work just fine. And then also on the front, on the ram mount, is a Garmin Striker. And between the Striker and the Helix, I can tell you these were great upgrades because we found crappie last weekend and caught crappie in two different spots that I have no doubts we would not have found, we would not have caught if we wouldn't have had these two systems working on the boat. So. Really, really nice additions to the boat there. With that, we'll go to the interior. All right, guys, uh, we went over the console a few minutes ago. I was going to show you just a couple other things. You know, your basic console layout on this. Uh, but one thing that's really nice about this console is uh, I'm a taller guy. I'm 6'2". Scott's a, a taller guy, too. And there is tons of leg room in here. As you can see down here, uh, this actually has more leg room than his old boat, which was a bass, a 19-and-a-half-foot bass cat. Uh, this 16-and-a-half-foot tracker under this console has more leg room than that boat did. So it's really nice and it's got plenty of room up here to be able to do add-ons for whatever you guys might want to do um, as far as adding stuff into the dash and into the console. We'll move up here to the live well. All right guys, the live well on this boat, um, there's been some guys, I don't know, kind of maybe gripe and say it's not big enough. It is a nine gallon live well uh, and the bilge on it is, it's able, to, it's able to pump 500 gallons per hour on there, uh, but actually, you know, you know, going in with a Heritage or a Classic, it's not going to have one of the bigger live wells. Uh, when we fished this last weekend, we had quite a few crappie in here and a keeper bass. No problems, no issues. It is, it's a one-piece rotomoted live well with rounded corners, which is nice if you're tournament fishing. Going to keep those fish uh, healthy all day. And at the end of our day, all the fish were fine. We had a minnow bucket in there. Uh, everything did well. Not the biggest live well in the world, but uh, I mean, it did a great job. Also, an upgrade that he did to it was a. Uh, Put a timer on it one minute on three minutes off and that worked really well as, uh, as an addition and add-on to the boat too something you might want to think about uh, gives you a little bit of circulation on it keep those fish nice and lively in there um, one thing too on the boat this is actually the only interior light that's on the boat is this one on the side of the console so one upgrade uh, we're going to end up doing on it is adding probably some led lighting around the bottom of the boat because you guys know if you're taking off before daylight or near daylight or bring it in after dark there's not any other interior lighting in the boat so that's the only thing there as far as uh, interior lighting that's the only one it has some storage back here too under both seats there's storage plenty of plenty of room to put whatever you want ropes anchors uh, you know safety kits you name it just more fishing gear so it's got storage on both sides here on both the uh, port and starboard side okay guys on the uh, on the rear deck of the boat, and you know, the, the boat obviously on the front and back has rear, 
and back casting decks on the elevated casting decks. But one thing that's nice here, it's got a nice big storage area. You can see here, you can keep all your tackle in here, life jackets, just whatever it is that you want. Um, Scott went ahead and put the magnet system on here, which is nice to hold the pliers, scissors, things you need to get a quick handle on, a quick grip on. Uh, but this has got plenty of storage in here, or if you wanted to, you could even convert it um, into another live well if you wanted to put a drop-in system in it. So that is the storage there. And then as we move to the front, to the bow of the boat here, more storage that's underneath the front deck. Um, he's got tackle in it, but obviously you could put anything you want there, tackle, anchors, you name it right there. So more storage is always good. And then on this side of the boat, on the uh, port side of the boat, this is the rod storage system on it. It can hold four rods uh, up to seven feet in length. So if you guys have any big seven and a half foot, eight foot flipping sticks, you're probably gonna need to, uh, you, you could still put them in here, but you're gonna have to angle them up on the back deck. Um, and I've seen some guys in the, old, in the heritages run along in here, you know, put the, uh, the rod holders, the rocket launcher style. So you could always add rod holders here, vertical, but uh, it's got enough room to do four here on the front deck. And as we come up on the front deck, you might notice a little bit different on the back. It has the high back pedestal seats. Uh, this is a leaner seat he just added. And the reason being, because I'm a taller guy, he's a taller guy, and there's not, there's a decent amount of room up here. The beam on this is six and a half feet, but we found out with that full size high back seat in here, as we were standing up here with the trolling motor, uh, trying to run it right here, the foot space, really that, that other seat was stopping about right here in the back of your legs hitting it and your your feet aren't that far apart, you know, shoulder width apart, almost keeps you a little bit off balance. So this leaner seat's the way to go. Gives you a lot more room up here to be able to run your trolling motor, get to your gear, uh, move around when you're fighting a fish, whatever it is that you need to do. So um, this is a really good addition as far as um, the front of the boat goes. a quick wrap up on the boat uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is a thing called the pure gas app and the reason I mentioned it is uh, it was suggested by the dealer and you guys can put some comments down in the comment section and uh, let me know what you think but with that being said uh, pure gas app what you can do is find a location near you where you can run pure gas in the boat rather than regular unleaded gasoline um, for the longevity of the engine and the longevity of the fuel lines things like that he's done nothing but run pure gas in this so you know, I think that's probably the way to go, especially with a brand new rig since this is a 2020. Um, and, there, and you know, as a quick overview on the boat too, you know, we fish this boat now. Uh, it's a great looking boat. It fishes even better than it looks, honestly. I fished a lot of different rigs over the years, especially when I was tournament fishing as a co-angler. Um, and I, I'm really impressed with the boat, especially at this price point. You guys know what they're running, uh, about $11,000 and then ship and, and prep and all that on that. But uh, a really, really nice boat. He's really happy with it. I'm grateful to get a chance to fish out of it. And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe. You can also follow me at, uh, on Facebook and Instagram. I'll put a link down in the description. And don't forget, we've got some more videos coming up. Thanks for watching.